What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. In today's video, we'll be checking out applying the major scale with a song like Eyes of the World. So let's go. So like today's video title mentions, it's all about applying the major scale with a tune such as Eyes of the World, right? Specifically, we're going to look at maybe this intro jam, this progression of E major 7, A, G sharp minor, right? Right. The idea of today's lesson is, yes, applying the major scale, but to get there, right, we'll look at several positions of this E major scale, how to connect them, and then ultimately how to apply them in that jam scenario. Right. The ultimate goal of this lesson is to get you a bit more comfortable with your major scale and having more freedom on the fretboard. So at that point, with practicing, having an idea where you can move, you ultimately have more freedom when it comes to an E major or even a major sounding jam. So let's go. So for today's video, we'll be looking at four different shapes for this E major scale. All right, so check it out. Let's say shape one, we'll start with our pinky finger root E, 7th fret of the A string. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. I'm going to go to that 5th degree, that B, and descend. It's very important when playing all these shapes, right, is to have the minimal amount of excess noise. Almost no excess noise is wanted, right? So that means you're playing a scale. Right? Nice and slow. To avoid noise, then so be it. Our next scale shape will start from the same E, 7 of the A string, but we'll start with our middle finger. Right? And again, slow and steady always wins the race. Our third shape is root 12th fret of the low E string with our pinky. Right? Slow and steady. Our fourth shape 
again, root 12 of low E, but with our middle finger. These are shapes that are, I guess you can call, part of the caged system, right? These are all shapes that we should already know. And besides knowing the shape, it's very important to know what notes are where, you know? So if I play this, this 10th fret of the B string, I know that's an A, that's the fourth degree. Major seven, third degree, and then back to our root. And then when practicing, slow is always the best. Also, I guess a good tip is practice with no reverb. You know, then you'll hear all these little nuances in your playing that may be hidden due to the reverb, right? And you can just go through the scales. And just knowing those four shapes is already going to open a lot of possibilities on the fretboard. So I guess the next question we have to ask is, how can we connect these patterns, right? A lot of the time during Zoom lessons, I highly encourage people to, like we're doing now, figure out these patterns. And once they feel comfortable with it, forget the patterns and really just see notes, right? And it's quite more simple than it sounds, right? Just think of it as like, let's say we're doing this E major, starting from our seventh fret of the A string. You get to this fifth degree, this B seven of high E. Why not? instead of descending, right, we go shift to that C sharp and bam. Right there, we connected two shapes just with this shift. You can also do it when you get to the lower part. Let's say. Right? So we're kind of seeing it as like, where's our ending point? Could be this B, C sharp, then this N. So it's just one note shifts. Let's say you want to connect now this coming at this this pinky twelve of low E. Think of shift again. Right? Ah, 
accidentally hit an A sharp or a B flat that was not supposed to be hit. <laughs> right? So think of it as you have these shapes. Right? as where's my starting point ending point shift maybe descend ah you know what you do Practice first your shapes. Get them under your fingers, nice and slow, no excess noise. Figure out where you want to start and where you want to end, right? If you start on this B, the next note is C sharp. Go up the scale and then descend the scale, right? If you're finishing on this E, descend and then climb back up and go farther. So now let's see how we can apply it to a song like Eyes of the World. So now comes the fun part. How do we apply what we just looked at in a musical context with Eyes of the World? So first things first, let's do a quick recap on the chords. We have this E major seven, A, G sharp minor, right? And if you have a looper, you would go sound like this <laughs> right so now let's see what we can do with the tools that we have now Fun jamming with all this. Well, all right, 
right guys, that is today's video, applying the major scale with the eyes of the world. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.